Dyma traeth porth mawr yn Sir Benfro. In o'r traethau gorau a lleoliad poblogaidd i ymwelwyr i'r ardawn. Ond dros mil o flynyddoedd yn ôl, cafodd y traeth hwn ei ddefnyddio ar gyfer pwrpas cwbl gwahanol. There was a stone-built chapel here, uh, which was then ruined by the year 1600. Uh, the bottom of the archaeological deposit is a large stone wall that's probably pre-7th century. So between that and the 13th, 14th century chapel, there's a whole series of, of graves and other things. Allwch chi gweld pa mor agos mae Capel Sant Patrick at Moor, ac mae erydiad y tir wedi bod yn broblem er salwm. Ar ôl y stormydd yn 2014, cael sant cyllid gan y Llywodraeth Cymraeg trwy cadw er mwyn cloddio'r safle. Dyn ni yn ôl nawr yn 2015, er mwyn cario mlaen y gwaith hyn i sicrhau na fydd unrhyw tystiolaeth archeolegol eraill yn cael ei golli i'r môr. Last year, 2014, we dealt with the immediate threat to the site. These are the burials which are being exposed and actually eroded. This year, we're doing a, a second strip a bit further inland, but still affected by erosion. But once we get down to the top of the archaeological deposits, uh, we treat everything very carefully. The first thing we do is record everything by drawings, by photographs, written descriptions. Uh, so you build up a whole picture of the site, which you can then reconstruct back in the office. Mae'r safle yn eithaf cymle, gydag amryw o heinau gwahanol. Yr hain gynharaf yw'r strwythu'r careg yma, sy'n cyn dyddio'r beddau dyni wedi cloddio hyd yn hyn. Y strwythu'r diwedd araf yw wal y capel canoloesol hwyr. So what we're sitting on here is the earliest built structure of the site. It's made of these massive beach boulders. And it's a wall which runs under everything else on the site. When this wall began to fall apart and sand built up against it, the kiss graves we have on this site were cut through it. And there's one behind me here which is cut right through the wall. We know that some of the graves here date to the 7th or 8th century. So we have a really good example of a stone-lined kissed burial here. Stone-lined kissed burials were fairly common during the early medieval period in Wales. As a grave, it's actually quite compact. And what they'll have done is they'll have cut the grave and then lined the perimeter of the grave with these stone slabs. They'll have then have deposited the body and capped it with a series of fairly large flat stone slabs known as lintels. One of the things about this site, which is uh, perhaps unexpected, is just how well preserved the human bone is. But here, because it's in windblown sand, it's very good preservation, which analysis you get an awful lot of information from the analysis of the bone, which you can't do on sites where the bone's not so well preserved. It really tells how the people were living, what their diet was, uh, what their age structure was. A huge amount of information we can obtain from this site. It does seem as though the latest use of the, of the cemetery site uh, was suited for children. Here we've got a really small kissed grave, very well constructed, the, the side slabs here, and beautifully covered on the top with a quite a large number of white quartz pebbles. And it's actually the third grave found on this site that's been of a very young child and covered with these white quartz pebbles. So at the moment it's looking as if this was a, a treatment in burial of you know, young individuals that wasn't something that was going on for the adults on the site. One very nice one which had a, a cross marked stone at the head of the grave, which is very unusual to find out. It's a unique find in it to have a cross marked stone with a kissed grave. And the whole series of other graves of, of similar date to those. Mae gyda'n ni claddau digaeth yn unigryw yn fan hyn, lle mae yna dau unigolyn wedi eu claddau gyda'i gilydd. Y syniad ydy bod y ddau unigolyn wedi marw unau ar yr un adeg neu yn agos at eu gilydd. Mae'r braich yma yn perthyn i'r unigolyn yn fan hyn, ac yn amlwg yn reiddiol mi oedd yn gorwedd dros bol yr ail unigolyn. Mae'r llaw wedi clymu yn dyn at eu gilydd. Mae'r fraich yr unigolyn yma 
wedi plegu yn ôl at ei gilydd ac oedd y llaw yn fan hyn yn agos at y gwddw. Yn y mynwent yma, hwn yw'r unig enghraifft sydd gyda ni hyd yn hyn lle mae dau yn ei golyn wedi eu claddu yn yr un bedd. We have professional staff here from WRF Trust and from the University of Sheffield, but actually most of the excavation is done by local volunteers and really without their enthusiasm and very hard work, we wouldn't be able to do this excavation. Do you have a lot of work in the community? Do you have a lot of work in the community? Do you have a lot of trusts in the community? Do you have a lot of work? A wedi ma mwy o ddordeb gyda bobl i gweld beth sy'n ymlaen. Mae'n dyddiorol iawn yn meddwl bod uh, y crew wedi dod uh, ymyr uh, ar oes nos mae'r um, chwilio am uh, atebion. A maen nhw'n mynd i ffind o uh, atebion, ond maen nhw'n mynd i uh, adar gyda llaw o mwy cwestiwn, a wyn siŵr. Dwi wedi gweld lot o pobl lleol yn dod mas a maen nhw'n siŵr gwybod gwybod beth sy'n mynd mlaen, a mae'r diddordeb da nhw, a dwi'n credu y pob un yn teimlo mae'n drenni fod popeth yn mynd mwl ar y diwedd, ond fel a mae'r bywyd. At the moment we haven't quite achieved what we hoped to this year, simply because the site has been so much more complex than we envisage. So at the end of this season, we'll then backfill the site, re-turf it over, and hopefully get some more funding for next year. Mae pob sgerbwd cafodd y gloddio yn Capel Sant Pantrig, nawr wedi dod i'r labordu ostilegol yma ym Mhrifysgol Sheffield, ac mae'r broses o recordio'r olion dynol yn gallu dechrau. Mae'r proses yn dechrau trwy cymryd allan pob asgwr yn o'r box ac yn osod yn ei le un yr un. Ac i ddechrau mae'n rhaid i ni recordio pa esgyrn sydd yma a pa rai sydd ddim. Wedyn allwn ni symud ymlaen i gweld os mae dyn neu ddynes oedd yr unigolyn ac hefyd beth oedd eu hwyd. Allwn ni hefyd gweithio allan pa mor dal oedd yr unigolyn trwy fesur yr asgwrn hir. Allwn ni hefyd edrych ar elfennau cymegol yn y danedd yn benodol strontium ac ocsygen. A herwydd mae'r elfennau yna yn galluogi ni dweud os oedd yr unigolyn yn lleol i'r ardal lle, lle cawsant eu gladdu pan oedd nhw'n blant. Dyn ni'n gallu wneud hynny, a herwydd mae strontium ac ocsygen yn adlewyrchu geoleg ac hefyd y tywydd yr hinsawdd mewn ardal. Ac o'i cymharu y lle cawsant eu gladdu, os maen nhw'r un peth, mae'n amlwg nath yr unigolyn tyfu fyny yn yr ardal honno. Mae cloddion mynwent yn rhoi'r cyfle i ni adlywyrchu ar pwy oedd y bobl yma ac sut oedd yn nhw'n byw. Mantais o astudio tystiolaeth archeolegol yw bod yn galluogi ni i ail greu gwahanol agweddau o'r gorffennol. <laughs>